In this video, I'm going to use the Wicked ROI reports to help you determine if your new leads have been acquired at a profitable ROI. We are going to analyze your campaigns by determining the amount of time your leads need to convert, applying the critical next step of using the correct attribution model for lead gen, and then optimize the campaign by either scaling, killing, or chilling on the ad spend. By the end of this video, there are three things that you're going to be able to do. The first is to be able to determine your customer buying cycle and lead value over time. The second thing we're going to be able to do is select and understand Wicked's patent pending new lead attribution model. The third thing is to use the new lead ROI report to measure campaigns for your lead gen effectiveness and then drill into the campaign for some Wicked ad spend optimization of scale, kill, or chill. At Wicked Reports, we follow a seven step framework to achieve these goals. Let's dive in. Look at the seven steps to track your marketing KPIs for lead gen campaigns and how to optimize the winners. Now, before you just dive in and start looking at ROI, there's two key one time analysis to do that'll give you a huge edge and allow you to know when you can spend at negative ROI on lead gen up front because you know you're making it on the back and because you know your leads take time to buy. Because everyone I talk to agrees. Hey, yeah, leads generally can take some time to buy. Yet when they look at their data, they don't keep that in mind and they're always all stressed out if not immediately printing money on day zero or day, literally day zero. Day one, when they start spending, then it's like a panic. Oh, am I making money yet? I get it. Everybody wants to make money right away. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes campaigns that convert some people convert a lot more down the road and that's where the real profit is. Let me show you how to correctly assess, measure, and take advantage of this phenomenon that we know is happening. The first step is to determine your new lead conversion time because you have to know how long it takes new leads to buy so you have the right time frame of evaluation when you're starting a new lead gen campaign. The first step is to determine the new lead conversion time because you need some expectation of how long leads take to buy so that when you're running your new campaigns, to get new leads to buy, you let it run for as long as your older new leads took to buy. Because otherwise, how you, you'll pull the trigger too early. You'll, you'll cut the campaign too early. The second thing is you want to evaluate new lead lifetime value. Because if you have an ascension campaign or subscription, strong rebuys, you're good at finding leads that are going to keep buying from you. That's a really effective, valuable data. It's a big advantage because you can spend that a negative ROI even longer or get more aggressive because you know you're making it up on the back end. Now we have a, another training video about this, which is specifically how to evaluate customer buying cycle time and new lead LTV. And so you will want to review that one right for here. I'll just remind you, you can come over to predictive behaviors to get your time frame. In this case, he's, 51 to 60 days is his like sweet spot where leads had better buy or else they're probably not going to. So he needs to wait two weeks. All the analysis behind that again is in the other training video and then newly cohort come over here into cohort analysis, newly cohort, and you can see how valuable your leads are. And usually like three months out, like if you're getting them worth a lot more money, three months out, that's great info to know. You can spend it a little more of a negative because you know you're going to get that compound lifetime value upping the ROI month two, month three, month four, however long it goes. We see some people with pretty dramatic customer value maximization that occurs. So again, you can go over to the other video for that, or you can just run these reports yourself. But in this case, let's just say here and look here, like he's doing about 20, 30% lift from these two steps. It's at least two weeks. He's gonna give a campaign, and after people buy, he can count another 20, 30% lift after a couple months. The third step is the new lead ROI report. This measures lead gen campaign ROI. You get here under reports ROI, and from there, you're going to come over here and you're going to run new lead ROI. And then you can choose the date range. I like to go back a year if you have that much data and then choose ads and then click apply. And then here we are with all of your marketing scored strictly from a new lead gen perspective. So that means for each of these campaigns, we pulled in the costs 
but this new lead number is auto-detected as a new lead conversion by cross-referencing your CRM. Because oftentimes leads come in, they're new. Many times they come in and they weren't actually new. And that's may or may not end up being a situation, but when you're trying to scale something at top of the funnel, you gotta have clean conversion data. So we only measure top of the funnel new leads. So from these new leads, how many of them bought? Well, quite a few sales here. That's a pretty good campaign out of your new leads, almost half of them. So these are the sales that have occurred strictly based on this new lead model. The next thing we wanna do is find the high ROI campaigns for this new lead attribution model. Wicked Reports makes this very easy. We have an attributed ROI column, and by default, we sort your campaigns by the cost descending. And so you can see here, here are the ROIs being made by new leads, new leads acquired by these campaigns. Now that I found a high ROI campaign, there's actually a couple, we're gonna optimize with a campaign explorer. I click on the campaign and choose Explore Selected, and now I can actually explore the campaign. I'm gonna make a few adjustments here. But for a Facebook campaign, these are the ad sets targeted. Here are the ads. Here is the ROI broken down at an ad, ad set level. Now what is pretty sweet is you can click on this eyeball and actually see the ad in question. Because so, I mean, imagine you, know, you have 400 ads running, many of them. We'll go hit the Facebook API, show you, oh, look at this really nice, beautiful ad. You can jump to Facebook Ad Manager if you wish. And then this is coming from the ad set, which is in Facebook's parlance, what you're targeting. Now, to optimize this, again, we're looking at ROI, and what we wanna do is move the things that aren't making money, turn those off, and move that budget to the things that are making money. Assuming this campaign was built for lead gen. Because again, we always wanna match the attribution model to the campaign intention and goal. And this whole video is about new lead gen. So I'm assuming when you're looking at these campaigns, you wanna optimize the ones that you find that have high ROI and they were for that intention. So here we come in here and you see this in campaigns. Some of them are doing quite well, some are doing so-so. So a 25% campaign is not doing well when you're also doing other things at 3,700. Everything's relative. So what does that mean we wanna do? We wanna turn off the ad set delivery services. And then we wanna take that future two grand and move it to one of these higher ROI ad sets, which is either Interest Gourmet or this lookalike 1% top 1000, yada, yada. So, and, and that's what we're looking to do. So in this case where so many things are making ROI, this isn't, look at this, 741%. 604 bucks. Why not spend more there? I probably, it probably wasn't even looked at. Well, guess what? You need to spend more there. Let's look at the image. Maybe the ad creative's a little different. Same ad creative. That one's really killing it. So what are we gonna do? Let's take this 59%. You know what, people like crab cakes, you know, it's a nice test. And they're looking to buy lobster. Guess what? They didn't, they didn't, really, they didn't really love it. <laughs> so take this, the future 468 bucks, turn off this interest, put the money over here, on this lookalike, that's what you do. Now, some of these are like ridiculously high. Look at this one. That's too high of an ROI. You don't wanna be running around bragging about your 1500% ROI. You could have made more sales instead. What a great ad set this was, by the way. Lookalike 1% tier four, whatever that happens to be. Well, it found a lot of leads for the price, 30 cent leads, and they bought. I mean, that, this isn't gonna happen just because you use Wicked Reports. That's some good marketing right there. but. Where w Wicked comes in is, okay, well, you need to pour money on this because wouldn't you rather have fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 and maybe a 500% ROI? Well, you could go spend more money, keep spending, and then keep monitoring. Look at these ROIs, a lot of these. Two, um, these were really good and you should spend more money here. Just no brainer. So that's how you do it with Facebook. Google's somewhat similar. I'm gonna go back here. Let me turn off my filter. Let's go do a search campaign there. What was I doing? Prospecting lobster, search lobster. Let's do this guy, prospecting lobster. Here with Google, the content tag is the ad group and the term, if it's search, is the search term. Now we also have the audience, if you're using some of the great new in-market audience or custom lists, if this campaign had that, they would show up here. 
display would show the thing that triggered the display. Sometimes that's a demographic. Sometimes it's a URL. Same with YouTube. That's how this works. Right now we're in a search campaign, so it's a search term. Now, you see just a sort of a broad range of consistent ROI at the top. Great. You'd probably just keep spending. However, in, in happily, you're making a couple hundred percent. But as we scroll down here, let's look for pocket pockets here. Lobsters and get. That one's working out pretty amazing. Here's where, okay, so we have all this green of profit. But here where you have um, some things, so lobster by mail. You would think as a shipping company, lobster by mail would work, but guess what? It's not. Not for new leads. Live lobster, not working for new leads. Lobster roll kits, not working for new leads. So if these campaigns were specifically designed for new leads, well, guess what? They aren't working. How would you do that in Google? You upload a Gmail, you upload a list. They can match on Gmail, restrict those people from your list, and you can put in more top of the funnel words. Now, where this is a more, more of a pure e-com, there's a whole uh, training on how to do lead gen for e-com, both for Facebook and for Google. So I'm not going to get into that here, but if you're doing that, then this would show the results of that versus a direct response. Because again, you, check the, you pick the right attribution model to match the intention of the campaign. So then you just repeat. You go through each campaign that's making money at the top of the funnel. That's intention was to get the top of the funnel. And you move the losing spend to the winning targeting offers and just repeat, repeat, repeat. And that's how you optimize lead gen campaigns using marketing attribution data from Wicked Reports.